All right, we're going to try this for a uh, camera angle, your mounted tabletop. I don't think you'll see anything if I put you up top. Okay, now I've got my chip mounted on my perf board right here. Okay, and I did a printout of the circuit diagram earlier. Nice big full page printout so I can set it behind what I'm doing and look at it and make sure I'm wiring correctly. The circuit the chip has a notch in it in one end that's how you can denote pins 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 on this side 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 6 nope wrong it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 down this side and it starts up here and goes 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 okay now I'm not going to use pin 1 for anything so what I usually do is turn the chip over and just bend that prong over. That holds the chip to the perf board so she's not moving around on me while I solder. Okay. Now the positive lead is going to go to pin 9. Now I've already sanded the hole for the positive lead down quite a bit and that worries me a little bit. I didn't mean to do it. What I'm doing now is I'm bending over the positive lead so that she holds somewhat in place. I'm going to clip this in my helping hands because there's no way I can hold this and solder at the same time. This thing came out on its own but as soon as it's soldered, soldered it'll hold itself in place. And I'm going to go ahead and go with the hole right that's with pin number two because I got a little crazy with my sanding on this. I sanded the um, perf board for a reason it's oval shaped now and I needed something oval shape to well essentially fit better in the model the square shape was a little too big and it wasn't fitting in there very well okay now I'm gonna lower the camera just a little bit okay I'm not going to zoom in any, I don't think, because I don't think the camera is going to handle too much zoom. That's about as far as I'm going to take that zoom. You can see I've got my lead touching pin number one right now. Take my solder iron. Now, this is a weird tip. I didn't know this tip was on there, and I didn't know what its use was. Probably still don't know what its use is. But I found that if I tin it a little bit, then all I really have to do is hold the tip on there until that heats up and it will deposit enough solder on there to make a good solder joint okay now we're gonna check that and the way you usually check solder joints is you tug them and no that didn't solder on I was afraid of that because I'm not letting the heat sit on there long enough I think okay but we can fix that just melt that solder on there again get it around there there now you don't want to put too much heat because too much heat I'm getting close to too much heat it'll fry the chip these chips don't take a whole lot of heating and I bet I did not do a good job on that solder joint this time it appears to be holding yeah it's holding pretty good so we got that one done now the next joint is trickier because the negative power lead goes in on pin 8 into pin 13. So I gotta pull the chip and turn it around. Okay? Because pin 8 is here. Here, let's poke this out. This is pin 8. Pin 13 is there. So I've got a long piece of this lead stripped. So when I poke it through this hole, I can bend it around and down to where I wanted to. Now before I do this, I'm going to put this in my helping hands so I don't have to worry about holding this as I'm trying to work. Because I'll be honest with you guys, holding this thing while you're trying to solder and stuff just is a whole lot of not fun. So she comes in That's on pin 9. Let me make sure I did this on the right pin, because that's bugging me a little bit. Yep, that's pin 9. 
pin 8 is its opposite corner. So I'm good to go now. I know where everything is. I just have to make sure I'm getting everything on here correctly. Okay. So pin 8 is this corner here. And what I like to do is take this thing over the pin this way and then bend it like this over to the pin I need up here. Now my big worry is the soldering iron drifts towards me and it's very very hot. It's been on for about an hour now. Okay. We're getting her lined up the way I want her lined up. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to bend it with the pliers because it's I want a better bend than I'm getting. And the pliers are going to give it a nice straight bend. There we go. Let's get her through the right hole. There she is. Another thing, I'm going to quit holding the perf board like that. I'm going to start holding this wire because I'll hold it in place better. Yeah, you guys can still see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this, bend it up. Careful not to bend the pin because bending the pin is bad. If you bend the pin, you can bend it back. Notice I'm not using the blade end of the X-Acto knife to do that with. Then I want to take and bend this to pin 13, which is right there. Now, in the last couple of rounds, I've actually had to cut this thing to size and this one she's coming out just perfect and I don't know how I don't know why but she lines up and she ends right perfectly at pin 13 she's not laying down the way I want her to and that worries me a little bit but that's what these bending pliers are for I think so I can get her to pin 13 you can see I'm fussing a lot with this thing. I mean, I am fidgeting and fussing, and I'm doing it because I've got to have these things lined up just right when I hit the solder to them. Because I can't have, I can't be clamping and nothing when I solder. I mean, they got to be on there the way I want them when the solder hits. There we go. Now the two pins are touching. Time to get my solder iron. A little solder on it this is the way I'm doing this get that solder to flow down in there I think I'm not happy with it by the way I'm using rosin core solder a lot of you can see the smoke when that touches don't breathe that smoke you can tell the smoke's dissipating pretty quickly in this room. I have a ceiling fan running. So it carries the smoke away from me. And I'm touching that way more than I'd like. And I can tell that pin isn't getting soldered. Mainly because the IC chip itself has slipped through. Ooh, and she got hot. Or maybe it did get soldered. Nah, I didn't get soldered. We're still on camera though, yes. There we go. Now I know that got soldered. Alright, so I got the positive lead and the negative lead on there. What's up next is the capacitor, which just fell on the floor, and the resistor. I'm going to stop filming for a little bit. I need to cut them down to size and get them in place before I solder. And I think that's going to take far too long to do on camera. Eh, maybe not. Maybe you guys would like to watch that. Hard to say. So I'm just going to go ahead and film it. Okay. But in order to do that, i got to pull this off here. And see... I didn't have my solder joint right. That's one thing about this. You know pretty quickly when your solder joint's not done right. She just comes apart like she did. So, I'm going to get this fixed. I 
Okay, I'm going to stop filming until I get that arranged right and soldered. But you see how I've been doing it. Okay, I got that soldering fixed. They're on, they're good now. Let me unclip this. And let's talk about getting the resistor and capacitor in. Okay, now the capacitor goes across the first pin here and the third pin here. I've cut the leads way down on this capacitor. Primarily because if they are too big, I can't get them to solder in correctly. Now I'm going to put it through these two holes where it belongs. I'm going to pull, push the capacitor down in there. In a minute, I have to get a resistor in between this capacitor, and that's going to be the fun part. Okay? Now I look at the back side, and I look at the length of the leads, and they're still far, far too long. I have less trouble with this one. It's not on camera. But I'm sure most of you understand that concept. Okay. So, I'm going to push this lead over. And I can tell the lead is far too long. Okay. Now, it wouldn't matter with this lead as much as it will the next one. Because the next one has a chance of hitting this cross piece. But I'm still going to trim this lead down. So, I'm going to bend this lead back up. I'm going to get my nippers here. And I'm going to cut off some of it. I don't want to cut it all off because I'd rather leave too much with this cut than take too much off. Now that's going to get this first pin down. Second pin, it's a little on the long side, but it's livable. Okay. All right, so I got the capacitor pretty much squared up and stuck in there where it needs to go. Up next is the resistor. Now I'm going to stick them both in here before I try to solder this capacitor in there, primarily because the resistor goes in some of the same holes. And that's where the fun begins. This, okay, now, another fun thing is, these, these perf boards, they're designed for the part to go across a certain number of holes. Okay, for instance, this resistor would cover two holes and go in, put it in hole one, and the other end of the resistor goes in hole four. What I need to do is have it go through two holes. So that requires doing some bending of the leads. Okay, like this. All right, now I can sit her in here with the resistor. And she goes through one of the same holes as the, I mean, capacitor. She goes through one of the same holes as the capacitor, which will help hold things in place a little bit better. Once I get her threaded through there, she doesn't want to go in there. That's not a surprise. Because these holes aren't really meant to have two electronic components coming through them at the same time. All right, now I got to cut this lead down on this resistor quite a bit. She's far too big. So let me get this and nip. Now, I also take a file and use it to bend the leads over with so I can get the leads lined up where I want them. squared up all right now everything seems to be in there the way I need it to be what I'm going to do next is mount this in my helping hands all right you can see they're mounted in my helping hands then I'm going to take my file Make sure all my leads are bent over the way I need them to and are connecting the proper pins on the chip. They are not, but they're close enough. Well, two of them are. The third one is not. The one with the resistor shared with the capacitor. He's being stubborn today and don't want to go where I want it to go. So I have to, ooh, that's hot. I have to work it a little bit. We'll get it worked. 
have no fear of that. And you can't work these pins on these chips too much either because they will break. They're not real strong. There we go. So I'm going to do some soldering again. Okay. Get some solder on the tip. Ah, someone's calling. I'll deal with the phone call in a little bit because I know who it is and I know what they want. I need to do this first. All right, we're going to check that in a second. I'm going to go take care of that phone call. And I already know I got to fix a little bit of the solder job. But I'll show you then results in a bit. Well, it's working. I got all three circuits working. Now all I have to do is solder in the wiring for the lights at the top. And that's tricky because I got one of three of those made. Okay. And I might see how that looks. I'm going to take a look how that looks in a second. I'll be back. But again, that's a tricky part. This is relatively easy compared to that because I have a cramped space to put all this in. Anyhow, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm just happy this is functional and working, and I have all three of them working. Oh, this LED? Not soldered in. It's just press fit into the pins to make sure it is functional. Okay? Back later. Okay, I've been working for a while and I finally have success on what I'm attempting to do. I got one to work. Let's see how it's going to look. Lots of light leak right now, I know. The point is, I want to see how it's going to look there. And if I can find it real quick, I want to find the clear part. Let's see what it looks like with the clear part over it. It's going to do exactly what I want in the exact way I want. I think she's going to come out looking really nice. I don't feel too much heat being built up in there either. Which means I might be able to leave it running for X number of hours at a time. So I'm kind of liking how that's coming out. You can see it with the clear part on the end. I think you're really going to be able to see it. Especially if I frost that part up a little bit. But anyhow, there's lots of light leak to fix. No doubt. But we'll get her fixed. And we'll get her running. I think she'll come out looking just the way I want her. So, let me get the other two done. And then I can get this glued to the main body. A little bit more lighting after that, and I can start putting the whole rocket ship together. Back later. Phoebe, what have you got in your hands? Where'd you get him? How'd you get him? In the game. Did you win a game? Yes. Yeah? That's how you got Bugs Bunny? You won? So BB's a winner? Yeah.